Our last topic as we talk about Bible basics for new believers is really <clears throat> important to talk about what comes last. You know, we're talking about eternity. What about eternity? What happens after this life is over? And this is an important issue to consider because eternity is a lot longer than this life, right? <laughs> Amen. Amen. And probably one of the uh, illustrations that came to me short after I became a Christian was the dot and line illustration. And that's where, just to imagine that you have just a, a dot here that you can't, you can barely see from where right. you're sitting. And then after that dot, you draw a line that goes all the way to the end of the room. Yeah. Well, let's make it go, uh, that's north, let's make it go all the way to Canada. Well, let's, <laughs> let's just skip the circumference of the earth and let that line go out into space. Well, the dot is our life now, yeah. and the line is eternity. And which is why Jesus said, you know, what shall it profit a man if he gained uh, the whole world and lose his own soul. Has he really gained anything? You know, within that dot, if I live to be 18 or 80, does it really make a difference compared to the to, line? To eternity. And that's that's how Jesus viewed life. Yeah, that's a great perspective, an overall perspective. We're talking about this. And so what that illustration assumes is that life continues after we die in this physical world. Now, does that make sense to you? Can you tell us why that why that makes sense. <laughs> I have a friend that he says, I can't talk about this subject because why? It just hurts my mind to think about <laughs> eternity, you know? But humanity, no matter what view you have of life, the immaterial part of us is more important than the material part of us. For sure. instance, if, yeah. if, if your arm got chopped off and you were able to deal with it, the material part of you wasn't right. But if you're just, okay, I'm going to go on and, and press on and, and live life, right. you'd be okay. Yeah. But your whole body could be whole, nothing wrong with it, but yet you're depressed for right. some reason, you're not okay. Right. Our mothers nurture us for the first five years of our life, and then we go to school, we get educated for 12 years, and sometimes we get educated for 18 or more yeah. years. And it's that part of us that it just doesn't make sense to me. I know, I go to a wake, I look at a person in the, in the casket, it looks like they're gone, mm -hmm. but it doesn't make sense to me that all of a sudden that part of us that is most important, that we right. pour the most into, all of a sudden one day disappears. It no longer exists. Yeah, doesn't does make, sense make sense to me. And that's really consistent with what the Bible says as well, right? Mm -hmm. Hebrews 9 says that uh, it's appointed to a person to die, then comes judgment. There is something after death. There's, and the Bible talks a lot about what happens after death. So uh, what does the Bible tell us what happens after death? Well, it says in Matthew chapter 25, Jesus said these words. He said, uh, one day those that believe on me shall awake to eternal life and others shall awake to eternal judgment. Okay. Now, I just yeah. want to be quick to say yeah. that um, if the Bible, if Jesus didn't talk about the subject of eternal judgment, I wouldn't believe it. It's very hard for my mind to comprehend that. But... Jesus said it, and you know, and I, I was talking to somebody the other day that said, well, they don't believe it. And I said, man, I'd have a hard time if we were living during the time of Jesus and he walked into the room and you had an argument with Jesus and say, I'm right on this and you're wrong. I, I yeah, just, you know, yeah, yeah, true. it's Jesus yeah. spoke about the, the about eternity and, and there's two places to go. Right. And so the timeline is something like this. So Jesus died, he rose again, he lives today, he's coming back. Uh, to this world, and he's coming back partly for the purpose of instituting that judgment, of mm -hmm. judging humanity. And so let's imagine all of us gathered around Jesus, and um, you know, how does that all sort out? Well, uh, it says that some are going to go to hell, uh, a place that he called hell. And Jesus mm -hmm. described that place in Mark chapter 9. And uh, he said, it's however you interpret what he said there, right. uh, it's a place that we don't want to go. Right. It's and a very grim picture. Whether it's literal or figurative, even if it's figurative, it's figurative of something very, very horrific. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, and so that, that's, and then it talks about uh, a place called heaven, eternal mm -hmm. life. Yeah. And, it, and just as indescribable as yeah. hell is, so is eternal life. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, the Bible talks about how in that eternal state, we, we see the original creation that God made that was fallen hmm. is restored. Amen. And everything that God meant for the world to be and everything that God meant for humanity to be is then fulfilled. Yeah, and I, I, I personally believe that, that heaven is going to be better than 
Adam and Eve if they had never sinned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of reasons why, but so when we when we get there, you know, tell us a little bit about it. And um, well, I you know, if I used to believe that uh, that heaven was going to be rather boring, and that we're all going to be on clouds and we're going to have our little wings and yeah. playing a harp for eternity. Yeah. And, uh, no, it's uh, uh, the Bible says that. Uh, uh, you have been faithful and little God will entrust to you much okay. and so and it says in Corinthians that um, uh, that we as Christians believers we're going to have to give an account for all the decisions we made in this life whether good or bad right now right. Jesus died for all of our sins so right. we won't have to answer for our sins right it's not about salvation but right. it's about what the nature of our eternity is like right right and the, the dividing line between uh, those who go to eternal judgment and those who go to eternal life is who have put their faith in Christ right. and because Christ took the judgment for our sins. Right. But then for those who have received Christ, there have to give there's a judgment day for us that we will have to give an account for this life. Kind of like a, a job review at a work yeah, or something yeah, like can, that. That's a good, we have a little performance evaluation, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then, so heaven, heavenly existence, you know, you talked about faithful and little, given fit, you, you're, you're given more. So there must be some sense of uh, our experience of heaven having, uh, being rewarded on the basis of how we did in this life, right? You, Amen. So. Amen. And, and that's, a, that's a concept that for a lot of Christians, they never thought of. And even Christians that have been known Jesus for a long time, for some mm -hmm. reason, I think we've, we failed the church in right. not teaching that aspect about right. the, the judgment for Christians one day. Right. So it's still a wonderful place. And you know, here's the thing, when you think about eternity and what that's like, you know, it's really, really hard to imagine that this life um, by itself, without an eternal hope or eternal reward, that this life is worth anything. I mean, what, it, it, what I mean, to live this life and to try to go through all the motions, if there's not something beyond, something greater, where justice is really accomplished and where, um, and where the faithful are really rewarded and all the rest, then that just doesn't seem to be... Uh, seem to be right mm -hmm. you know it seems like there's got to be more and thankfully there is more Amen. and hopefully this is an encouragement to you and a hope to you and also the accountability for how you live your life is going to make a difference for you the fact that we do live um, beyond this life and God has given us eternity